This module is about sorting. So you might be asking yourself, why are we spending so much time on sorting? Um, so one reason we were interested in sorting is because it's uh, an important part of searching for things. So uh, we've looked at search a little bit already this semester. So linear search could be used to search through unorganized data. You could basically look at each item in a collection of data until you find what you're looking for. Uh, we've also talked a little bit about the idea of binary search. So binary search can actually be done in log time, um, but it requires the data be ordered. Okay, so if you're going to be rep repeatedly searching through data, it's going to be much more efficient if the data is already ordered, if you've already sorted it, and then you can repeatedly apply binary search. Okay, another reason we're looking at sorting so much is because we're studying computer science and we need example problems. And sorting gives us a rich set of different types of uh, algorithms to look at and it will expose us to some interesting ideas and patterns. So I'd like to take a couple of looks at a few different visualizations of sorts. So the first one's my favorite. We're gonna look at 15 sorts in six minutes, although we won't watch quite all of it. Um, so for each of the next three examples, I encourage you to spend some time taking a look at each one on your own. Okay, so this is a YouTube video. Uh, it depicts the sort by showing these bars with different heights, and it's slowly putting them in order from the lowest to the highest. Um, it also has some cool uh, sound effects that sound like um, uh, video arcade games in the 80s and 90s. So uh, up here at the top, it depicts the name of the sort. It's, telling, it's counting the number of comparisons that are going on. Uh, it's also indicating the number of array accesses. So it's storing all this data in an array and keeping track of the total amount of time. Uh, okay, so let's look at a couple examples. So this first one, selection sort, which we've already spent a lot of time talking about. So if you uh, don't remember, selection sort basically searches for the uh, next minimal value in the unsorted data. So all the data after uh, this green bar here is unsorted, it'll be going through it looking for the smallest value. Once it finds that minimal value, it will swap it in here to the first available spot. So notice it's slowly building up from smallest to largest. Okay, the next sort is called insertion sort. Uh, it uses a slightly different process, but still essentially kind of builds a, an ordered set from left to right. So the things to the right of the green bar are still unordered, the things to the left of the green bar are already ordered. This one's called quick sort. I'm gonna speed these up just a little bit. Okay, this one's called merge sort. Uh, so you should have already looked at this in the prep material, and we'll be looking at merge sort in the studio this week. So notice merge sort, we'll see a slightly different pattern here than we saw in the first two sorts. We'll see kind of peaks being built, and then the uh, kind of two different uh, groups, two different peaks will be merged together. Here's heap sort, which we've already seen. Uh, notice in this one that it's hard to see the, the pattern of ordering until it gets relatively far along. So initially it was building the heap and now it's removing the uh, maximal items from the heap and leaving them at the end. So this would be using a max heap. Note this one's called radix sort. We'll be looking at that this one in this module. This is another variation of radix sort. Okay. 
This one is using the uh, C++ compiler's uh, built-in sort in the standard library. The pattern should look somewhat familiar to some of the other sorts. It's kind of a combination of uh, multiple different sort algorithms. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and move on to some other patterns. Again, I, uh, we've made it about halfway through this. I encourage you to look through the, uh, the remaining part of it and um, maybe see if you can figure out what's going on in these different sort algorithms just based on the patterns you, you're seeing. Okay, so here is our second visual tour. Uh, so a lot of different sorts can be represented in dance form. So here is a... Uh, uh, set of videos that represent various sorts as dances. Um, so we'll again look at selection sort, uh, kind of our, our classic starting sorting algorithms. Um, so we've got our unordered data, our dancers. We've got our various positions in the array. And remember that selection sort's trying to move along finding the minimum item once the minimum item is found, we'll swap it to the beginning of the array. So this is uh, taking a while because we're trying to find the minimum item. Each item is being compared with other items in the array, and we're slowly moving along until we found the minimal item. So in the interest of time, I'll speed this up a little bit until we've got our first couple of items sorted. So right now we're up to comparing the zero to the uh, eighth item in the array, and then the ninth item in the array. And finally, we've identified that zero is the minimal item and belongs at index zero. Now the item in index one is slowly moving along doing comparisons uh, until we found our next minimal item, which will end up at index one. Okay, let's move on to our third visual tour. Um, so this is at toptal.com. So this gives a, a sorting algorithms animation guide. Uh, the landing page here is a big grid. Uh, across the top, it shows the different sorting algorithms, insertion sort, selection sort, bubble sort, shell sort, merge sort, heap sort, quick sort, and quick sort three. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on selection sort. And this will take us to a page that's just about selection sort. Um, so it gives an algorithm provides a little bit of discussion, and it gives several properties of selection sort. Uh, so notice it says uh, not stable, it takes order one extra space, uh, it takes uh, theta n, uh, so this is should actually be an exponent theta, uh, big theta n squared, comparisons, and it also keeps track of the number of swaps, and it says it's not adaptive. Um, so keep in mind, there's several different properties that can be applied to different sorts, and some of the different sorts will have uh, will will vary in these properties. Um, okay, when we hit the play button, it's going to show us what the sort does on different types of data. So uh, here we've got completely randomized data. So again, it's uh, kind of using bar length to indicate the data that's being sorted, and when it's all sorted, it'll kind of look like a uh, a little uh, triangle. Uh, it also has nearly sorted data, completely reversed mm -hmm. data and data with only a few different unique values. So, so almost all the bars here are one of uh, four different sizes, it looks like. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do just one of these examples. I'm gonna go ahead and do just the random data. So I'll click on it, it uh, runs through, and it kind of depicts what the sort looks like for us for the random data. So again, it's kind of continually scanning up and down until it finds that minimum item, and uh, then it moves it to the front. Okay. So we can uh, run this on nearly sorted data. See that it looks roughly the same. In fact, if I wanted to, I could uh, run it on all four different styles of data at the same time. And we see that they, they all seem to be taking about the same amount of time. As we'll see soon, some of our different sorts take different amounts of time on these different patterns of data. 
So let's go back and look at uh, a couple of other algorithms. Um, so we've also uh, just briefly mentioned insertion sort when we were looking at the previous two uh, visual examples. And uh, we've worked with heap sort already, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick look at heap sort. And uh, just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and run all four of these simultaneously. And uh, notice that it seems like it, it ran faster than the selection sort did. Um, also, again, we've got algorithm, discussion, properties. So it's not stable, that's interesting. Uh, o of one extra space, but see the discussion. So there's a caveat there. Um, oh, and log n time, and not really adaptive. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, quickly explore one or two of these others. Uh, quick sort sounds pretty promising. Um, Let's go ahead and click on quick sort. Uh, so I'm not gonna run this just yet. I'm gonna look down at the properties. It's not stable, whatever that is. We'll come back to that. Uh, o of log n extra space. So that's interesting, so it needs additional space. O of n2, so again, this should be n squared time. Oh, but typically n log n, interesting. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go back. And uh, what we could do is click on the play all button and then all of these sorts will start uh, sorting all at the same time. Uh, and we can try and identify which one's complete earliest. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on play all, uh, insertion sort. Oh, this one's already done. So are a couple of others here. Oop, and now all of these over here seem to finish up really, really quickly. And selection sort was, was kind of the last. So I'm gonna do that one more time. Okay, notice that uh, selection, insertion, and bubble sort all are kind of slow in comparison to the others on at least some of the data. Um, so I'm gonna run insertion sort one more time, and I want you to kind of look at uh, the four different groups here, random data, nearly sorted data, reverse sorted, reverse data, and a few unique items. Nearly sorted data is already done. So it turns out insertion sort is actually pretty, uh, pretty fast if the data is almost sorted already but it's pretty bad if it's completely reversed and it's not great when it's random. Okay, we can also uh, increase the problem size here so we get a better sense of how long it actually takes to sort things. So let's watch these. Um, again, uh, insertion sort's done. Um, everything else is uh, bubble sort's done with some data. Oop, it looks like uh, heap sort's starting to finish up. Uh, quick sort and quick sort three are done? Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Um, so some of the things we'll, we'll explore as we continue to look at sorts are the impact of different uh, orders of data and different styles of data. And we'll talk about that, those, some of those properties that we covered that apply to different algorithms here. Uh, so this week we'll be looking in particular at um, merge sort in the studio. And we'll also uh, be spending a little bit of time looking at a couple of different types of sorts that aren't covered here. Okay, so uh, one of the things that was covered on the top tile example was the idea of time complexity for these different types of sorts. So let's do kind of a quick review of what we just saw. So we've spent a lot of time with selection sort, which we've already identified as an n squared algorithm. Uh, we also saw at top tile that insertion sort uh, also is a uh, worst case n squared algorithm, although it turns out it actually did quite well with the data that was already uh, nearly sorted. Um, there are several other sorts that were covered there. There was bubble sort, which was also an n-squared algorithm. Shell sort, also n-squared. Uh, and then merge sort, which will be covered in our studio this week, which was n log n. And heap sort, which we've already seen and identified as n log n. Um, and then there was also the quick sort. In fact, there were two different quick sorts covered. Uh, and in the worst case, it's n-squared. Although oftentimes we can actually do much better than that with quicksort, it turns out that um, it's not uncommon to be able to get n log n on average. Okay, so there's some caveats there. There could be a, an absolute worst case that is truly n squared, but it's possible to make it uh, almost impossible to encounter. So you can do things that are probabilistic that almost guarantee n log n behavior. Okay, so this leads to the question, what's the best we can actually do? So in the examples here, 
Uh, we've got at least two sorts and possibly a third one that fall into n log n, and we've got a bunch that are n squared. So is it possible to do better than n log n? Um, is that considered good? Okay, so we'll continue to explore this idea of what's the best we can possibly do.